Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. So I often get asked a few questions centered around rare plants and they seem to be reasonably similar when you look at it. So on one hand, I always get asked, you know, Kaylee, what are the easiest rare plants to take care of? What plants ship well? What plants acclimate well? But I also get asked a different question. That question is, what are good rare plants that I should invest in? Or if I do invest in this plant, will I get a good return on my investment if I plan to sell cuttings of it? Are some better than others? What's going on? Are the trends going up or down? How quickly are they to propagate? How much time in between actually cutting the plant if you're working from one plant? How good are they to spend your money on if that's what you want to get out of it? So this video is going to be a part one of two videos discussing discussing different rare plants for beginners that you can either make a return on your investment or you can't. Now, when I describe plants for beginners, I'm really talking about mid treble digits and downwards. So anywhere really, I think from high doubles to mid trebles, that's the range I'm considering for beginners. I will be doing a video after the part two of this video on the, the super expensive ones and which one of those are good to invest in and why in exactly the same style as this one. So if you don't want to miss that content, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button as that content will be available very shortly. I just want to say before we go any further, because I, I really want to make this known, I am aware that people buy rare plants not just to make money off them. I 100% am aware of that. And there is nothing wrong with having rare plants in your home simply to just enjoy them. On the other hand, it is also equally fine to buy a house plant for an investment and to take cuttings and to sell them. That is absolutely fine to do. Both are fine to do. So I'm not disputing one or another. I'm not saying that plants are simply investment pieces. It's really up to you. But as a plant shop owner, I do get asked this a lot. And I do think it'd be fun to talk about it because I don't think many people do. So let's talk about it. So when we talk about a plant being, you know, worth an investment, what, what does that really mean? What, what factors do we need to even consider to decipher really if the plant is worth it? So I've narrowed it down to a few factors. One would be the price. Now, this is the price that you would be buying the plant for. So you can call it retail price. You can just call it the buy-in price, I guess. The price for you to acquire the plant in this current climate as of recording this video, because obviously this does change over time as market trends fluctuate. The second factor I would consider in whether a plant is a good enough investment is the ease of propagation. So how easy they are to propagate generally, or perhaps the failure rate on propagations. For example, if you take three cuttings, how likely are they all to succeed? Are two of them going to fail? Are all three of them going to succeed? In my experience, how do I think that is for a given plant. That will factor into how good they are as an investment. Similarly, another thing to consider is the time between propagations. So if you cut your one mother plant, how long is it probably going to be before you can then cut it again and sell another cutting? Remember, this isn't for people that are doing it en masse like myself. This is for people that are doing it with their one mother plant and they just want to make a bit of cash. Another factor is, of course, generally the ease of care of the plant. I won't go into specifics when we talk about each plant, but obviously if a plant is super hard to care for, that's going to be a factor in you propagating and potentially selling on propagations. The next two things to consider are actually quite important. The first one is the market trend of the plant. So is the market trend going up? Is it going down? Or is it holding fast? Is it stable? That is a really important factor to consider as well when you buy these plants, because if they're going out of fashion, it's probably not a good idea to spend your money on it. Unless, of course, you don't want to propagate it and you want to keep it for yourself, then it's a great time to buy it. Another thing to consider is the availability of the plant as well, because if it's not available, that counters in as to whether you should maybe buy it or not. Because in a lot of cases, if it isn't available and you can get your hands on it, that is something that you absolutely should get because that really adds to the investment value. You're very likely to get a return on your investment if you do that. So I realize that is kind of a long-winded introduction, but it's really important that you understand where I'm coming from, what I mean by investment, what determines it, and everything else. This isn't necessarily an informational video. This is just an open discussion on what I believe is a good way of investing your money when it comes to houseplants. So kicking it off in no particular order, we have the Philodendron El Choco Red. I have one here. It's being propped. How appropriate. I think this has been propped and it's been underneath a leaf, so it's coming out a little bit funky. But you get the idea. This is what Philodendron El Choco Red looks like. This is the front. This is 
the back. This is why people enjoy the plant so much. It's got a beautiful red backing on it. It's a very, very gorgeous plant. Now let's start with the price of these. So to buy one of these, either retail or on Facebook or whatever have you, you're usually in low trebles. So low hundreds, we shall say, whether that's dollars, euros, pounds, whatever. It's usually around about low trebles. Obviously it varies like with anything in this list, but generally that's what I'm seeing them go for. Now they did really surge in prices last year. I believe they've come down a little bit, so they have settled it, which is really nice to hear because they, they got a little bit crazy, actually. In terms of propagation, though, personal experience, these are not the easiest things to propagate. Now, it could just be me, but I have this consistently across all of my Choco Reds. I believe I maybe have around 30 mothers. I have, I'm not sure how many propagations, to be honest, because they're kind of everywhere, but generally, I found that these props were failing quite a lot in the old method that I was propping them. I've got more success with them now, but personally, I've found them to be not very easy to propagate. And honestly, I have around about a 40% failure on my propagations, which doesn't seem that bad if you're taking, say, 10 propagations from your plants, right? If you have a lot of them in four fail out of every 10, that's not the worst. It's certainly not great, but it's not the worst. However, if you have one plant and you're going to sell a one leaf cutting that's you know going to grow a second leaf or whatever, that's not great. That's nearly a 50-50 chance of it failing. So that is definitely something to watch out for for these plants. I personally, personally do not think they are the easiest to propagate at all. In addition to that, I also find that they don't grow the quickest. They're not the quickest house plant. They're certainly not the quickest heart shape that you could go for if you wanted to go for one. Quite honestly, on a single plant, time between propagation, I would probably put it at around three to four months because they do grow slow and they don't, they just don't grow quickly. I don't know if this one has a date in it, does it? So this is the 4th of May, this plant went in here. We're now in the end of June. We're pretty much in July very shortly. And we have a little leaf, but it, it hasn't grown very well. And yes, that's a cutting. The mother plants haven't really grown much either. I think we're seeing buds now, but they're just not the quickest plants. So that is something to factor in. The time between propagations is, it's not the worst. Don't get me wrong. It's not the worst on this list, but it's, it's not, it's not ideal should we say. Ease of care, however, I've got to say they are very easy to care for. As long as you have, I mean, I'm actually growing mine at home in like 45% humidity and it can tolerate it. So that's really nice to hear. They don't need tons of humidity. Obviously they'll grow faster if you give them more, but they're very easy to care for and they can tolerate underwatering. They can tolerate overwatering quite well as well, which is, it's weird that they don't propagate well, given that they're easy care to an extent. I don't really understand that myself, but I do find that they're pretty easy, so you shouldn't have too many problems if you want to buy one of these. Now, the market trend on these plants, in my personal opinion, is actually going up. And I think it's possible that one of the reasons for this is due to how crap they kind of propagate. So I think demand has always been high, but availability is, it's really tailed off. And I can honestly see this when I buy this plant from my suppliers as well. The quality of what I used to get is not even a patch on what I would have gotten even just last year. So I can definitely see that there is some struggles in propagations due to the quality and you know size of the specimens that I'm getting in. So in my opinion, the market trend is going up purely due to that reason, because they have always been a very desirable plant that hasn't really changed. Now, do I think this plant is worth it as an investment to profit from? I don't think it is. In my honest opinion, I don't think it is. I think you could find better in terms of a return on your investment. I think that they are hard to propagate and they don't grow the quickest. So all things considered, if I was going to recommend a plant to you to invest in, it probably wouldn't be this one. But I had to mention it, obviously, because it is a very popular plant and you do see it kicking about. Not everywhere, don't get me wrong. You normally see one leaf cuttings. I wouldn't personally recommend it. So let's talk about the Philodendron Dean McDowell. That is what this plant is right here. It's not Pastazanum, it is Philodendron Dean McDowell. Now this plant has gone through a pretty big journey price-wise. Way back in the day, maybe around about two years ago, this plant was maybe found for late um, double digits, sometimes even mid double digits. This was not a plant that anyone cared about. Right now, however, you're definitely into low trebles for one of these plants. I think there's about two in this pot, by the way. Either that or it's it's sprouted twice. I'm not really sure. It's very, very full looking. It's got a cute little baby leaf though. Look at that. In terms of success of propagation, this is fantastic. 
Personally, I have not had failures with this plant. Obviously, I can't guarantee if you cut it that your propagations are going to survive. That's down to your skill and your environment. But I personally have never even remotely struggled with these. So in terms of a propagator, I think they're absolutely phenomenal. I mean, even now mine is actually rooting out of the pot. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it, it's ready to be, you know, I could almost cut this part here if I wanted to. I'm not going to, but I could if I wanted to. They're very, very good to propagate. Similarly, ease of care, they're absolutely fantastic as well. I do think they might need a little bit lower light than what you would maybe expect from a crawling philodendron, but otherwise they're very good. This is quite a nice one. Time between propagation, I have it at around about two to three months. This is obviously just dependent on the specimen that you get, how big the leaves are, everything else but I find that you can get propagations probably not the slowest, but not the quickest. It's kind of middle of the road for propagations on these. So it's it's definitely a good one, I think, if you want to start propagating a plant. This is, this is okay, this one. The market trend on this plant is really going up, though. And I think it's for a few reasons. I think, one, people didn't know it was a thing. Um, by the way, I should have mentioned, this is a hybrid of Philodendron gloriosum and Philodendron pastazanum. And sometimes, not all the time, sometimes people have a pastazanum that isn't a pastazanum and it's actually one of these, and vice versa. Sometimes people think that they have Philodendron mcdowell and it's actually a pastazanum. So there is a lot of confusion between the plants. The more people that find out about these and the more people that really, really want them from a collector's perspective. The demand is definitely going up for these. The availability, however, is actually reasonably low because no one's really propagating it because no one really cares. So in terms of do I think this is a good investment plant? Absolutely. This is definitely going to be a trendy plant. 100%. It looks good. It's a hybrid, which people, people love their hybrids nowadays. It propagates really well and it hasn't had its day yet. And that's really, really important. So I think if you want to invest in uh, definitely a crawler, if you're good with crawlers, this is absolutely one to go for and invest in because I think you'll get a quite nifty return on your investment. This plant here needs absolutely zero introduction. This is quite a large specimen, don't get me wrong. This is Philodendron Florida Beauty. Now this plant is not cheap. This could be, um, is it? It could be the most expensive one on this list. In part two, I think I have a couple more expensive ones. This could be the top end. This is usually sold at mid trebles. And I don't mean mid trebles for something this size. It might be half this size for mid trebles. So around about 500 pounds, 500 dollars, 500 euros, whatever have you. It's a lovely plant though. And it's probably so desirable because one, it's variegated, which is beautiful. But two, this leaf shape. If you haven't seen this plant before, here you go. That is Philodendron Florida Beauty. It's very, very gorgeous. It does go through a journey as leaves mature. This is the most juvenile leaf that I have. You can see it's slightly different shape before getting to, you know, the gloriousness that this one is. This is a very gorgeous plant. Now, you can't find them this size, really, unless somebody wants to sell off a full plant. You're not going to get one this size. You'll probably get one a lot smaller. You might get one leaf cuttings, usually. You can get maybe three leaf cuttings, but I, I highly doubt you're going to get one this size unless someone wants to just get shot of a plant generally because the value is more in selling more cuttings than selling one plant for more money. It's hard to explain, but it, it just is. In terms of ease or success of propagation, it ain't that easy for me, personally. I find these really hard to root. I find them very slow to root. This is a slow rooting plant when you propagate it. Now, I have some nice juicy aerials there that you may or may not be able to see. Very nice, don't get me wrong, doesn't mean to say it's going to root quick because obviously that's not enough for me to sell this plant. So when I take a cutting, which I might not have this one because it's so big, it, it'd probably just be a really nice big plant now. When I take a cutting of this, it will take some time. It's not going to be overnight. I do get failures on these as well. They can rot. I don't think they're quite as bad as Philodendron El Choco Red, but they're not that successful when I do take propagations. So it is one to watch out for, especially with the high cost that you have to buy them in at as well. Ease of care, honestly, by contrast, apart from you can get browning on these yellow sections, but I mean, you can with most things, of course. Apart from the browning that you can get on the plant, the plant is very easy care. I don't have any issues with these. Um, they, they respond well to being fed. They respond well to not being fed. They grow really well. 
They size up really well, as you can probably tell from these leaves. They've, they've gradually got bigger, not at any real pace, but it's definitely getting there as a plant now. You shouldn't really have any problems care-wise. The problem is only really in the propagation. Time in between propagations, I would say, would maybe be around about three months. And the thing that I think you need to watch out for when propagating this plant is essentially the plant returning to juvenile leaves. They will return to juvenile leaves both on the plant and on the cutting, which could be undesirable depending on what you're doing and, and if you mind about that or not. The market trend on this plant, I would say, is stable. I think there has always been a requirement for these. They aren't sold very often, so generally speaking, this is a very desirable plant and it's holding strong. I haven't seen it drop off at any point. And I think a lot of it is honestly due to the plant's appearance more than anything else. This is a very, very beautiful plant and it's an easy plant, even though it's variegated. I do think that's the reason why it is holding stable. It's, it's become a very classic variegated philodendron. It's definitely one of the classics, I would say. So for that reason, it's holding strong in the market. So I don't think you would lose money on the plant if you propagate it and sold it on. I think it's a good bet in that sense. Now availability, no one seems to really be selling them. Yes, I see one leaf cuttings of these plants, but I don't really see anything substantial being sold. I can't sell this one because it's actually too big for a box now. So I would be selling something, maybe three to four leaves. I think that's what I've sold in the past. A lot of people on, for example, Facebook are selling one leaf cuttings. Of course, after I release this video, you will see a ton of people selling probably more than that on Facebook because that's what tends to happen after I release these videos. So if you get lucky, you might find one a little bit bigger if this is what you want to go for. But generally speaking, to find one of good size, they are not commonly found at all. I have some mothers. I think I have around 30 odd, maybe 35 mother plants and they're all kind of this size. I do have props in addition to that. I've got them everywhere. I've got some in there. I've got some over there. They are much smaller though, so they're not as big as these. So they're sold, but it's not often you see them. So if you want to play with $500, pounds, whatever, I know that's a lot of money. If you want to play with it and you get a good seller, a good plant, you're good to go. I think if you buy a one leaf cutting, maybe not so much because it's going to take you a long time to get a plant to then cut it and then sell it. So I think the size of specimen offered is also something to consider when looking for one of these plants. Let's talk about the Monstera albo, otherwise known as variegated Monstera. This is not the Monstera Thai constellation, that is a different plant. This is the very stereotypical vining variegated Monstera that you can get. This is variegated small form Monstera deliciosa. Now the price on these guys is so variable, country to country, and the size of plants offered. Now, a lot of the time you will get offered a one leaf cutting. These plants range anywhere between low to mid trebles. So depending on the size of what you want, where it's a one leaf cutting, whether it's just a rooted chunk of node or whatever have you, you'll be paying a slightly different price. Of course, that goes for anything. But my point is that they are very, very variable country to country. That is something I've absolutely noticed. Ease of propagation is very, very good. Anyone that deals in variegated monstera may know this. Yes, plants can rot. Of course they can. All propagations can rot. Generally, I have around about an 80% success rate with these. Now, it's not 100. I find that Monstera aurea, which is the yellow variegated Monstera, I find that that one is slightly easier for me personally to propagate and I don't really get failures. These I do get one or two failures with, but honestly, it's nothing to worry about. If you know what you're doing with propagation, you're not really going to have many losses at all. Time between propagations can be very quick. It can be as little as two months. The only thing you have to be aware of, and that's what I'm showing you here, is juvenile leaves. Obviously these monstera leaves haven't fenestrated. What you will get when you cut your mother plant, your plant will revert to juvenile. Similarly on the cutting, the plant will also revert to juvenile, which isn't ideal because you will probably trade your first cutting or so that is mature and then from then on you're dealing in um, younger cuttings. This is of course absolutely fine. It really depends on what you want and what you're happy to deal with. A lot of your cuttings are probably going to end up like this. Um, it, it makes them very purchasable but a lot of people like to see the splits. So it's just something to be aware of, especially on the mother plant. You're going to get a lot of juvenile leaves coming off. There's really not a lot you can do to prevent that either. So it's just one of the perils of cutting variegated monstera. Ease of care, honestly, apart from browning again on the variegation, this is an easy peasy plant. There are no problems here. Treat it like any other monstera deliciosa and you'll be absolutely fine. Perhaps feed it cautiously. 
just due to the variegation and again burning the leaves but you won't have any problems this is a very easy plant i would say that the market trend for this plant is currently stable what I will say, though, off the back of that is it's definitely stable in the sense that it's always been of high value. Obviously, the value has gone up. COVID, it's happened to everything. But it, it's steadily sold. You, you can always find someone that wants one of these, generally speaking. But because more and more people are buying them and more and more people are investing in them and propagating them, supply is starting to meet demand. So I do predict in the future that the price on these may come down the more that the plant is in the hands of just hobbyists you know, private sellers just selling bits of these. I do think it's slowly improving. Do I think it's going to happen anytime soon? No, not really. I do still think this plant's going to be stable for some time because I think anyone that gets into variegated house plants, this is normally their gateway house plant, right? Because it's an easy care plant. It looks absolutely stunning and it grows really well. So I do think that the market is stable on these. The availability, again, is increasing a lot compared to what it was two years ago. So the price is still high on occasion, but you can probably find a cutting of one if you're looking for one. So do I think this plant is a good investment plant? Honestly, I think you could take it or leave it with the Monstera. So this kind of depends on the size of plant. If you buy a huge plant and you want to propagate from that, then cool. But if you're buying like, you know, a one leaf cutting, I, I would say no, it's probably not because the amount of time it's going to take for you to gain enough leaves to then be happy with it, to cut it and sell it. The plant's probably more available on the market anyway, and I don't think you'll be doing it as fast as others. Does that mean you can't do it? No, if that's what you want to buy Monstera for, then go for it. But in terms of genuine return on your investment, I think you can take it or leave it. I'd be inclined to not go too hard on it. It really would depend for me personally on the plant that I found. If I found a plant like this, for example, no, I wouldn't count on investing on it at all. If I found, you know, a large one with good variegation on a pole, similar to the one I have at home, yeah, I probably would. I haven't cut my personal plant because it was a personal plant, but I would consider something like that. So it kind of depends on the specimen and you can kind of take it or leave it. Let's move on to the Monstera Eskeleto. Now you may think this plant is Adansonii, Monstera Adansonii. It isn't, it is a different plant. This plant used to be known as Monstera Epipremnoides before I think essentially a true Epipremnoides was compared with these and it's, it's not a match essentially. So this is now known as Monstera Eskeleto. Now the price on one of these guys is low trebles and I think it's been roughly the same price for a long time. I think it's normally between low and mid trebles, so around about 250 pounds, dollars, whatever have you. That seems to be the price generally that these are sold for. Ease of propagation, I don't think I've had any failures from this plant actually. Now I will mention, because I can see the tag to be honest, this plant isn't a propagation, it is an import and I've grown it on and this is, this is my bit here essentially. This is huge and that's how it was imported. I can see this because there's a tag in here and it says new, I think it's 10 for, so the 10th of April was when I brought this in. So it's, it's been here, what, a month and a half, nearly two months. It's approaching two months. It's doing well. It's probably sellable very soon because if I pull it out here, you'll see. Yeah, that, that's, that's sellable to be honest, but I might keep it here as a mother. I don't know yet. So that's not a propagation, but if I wanted to prop from it, I can probably get it going quite quickly. Time between propagations from your mother plant, I'd probably say maybe about three months um, in between cutting it. I will say though, that these plants run, they produce runners, which is essentially a vine with loads of nodes on. So if you can get your plant to run and you're able to cut the runner and root the nodes, then you could propagate this plant a lot more. So that is a very good point to consider when investing in one of these. Ease of care, honestly, there's no issues here. Keep them fed, they're, they're quite hungry plants I find. Does this one need a feed? Yeah, a little bit, it does need a little bit of feed. They're quite good feeders, but you keep it happy very easily and I don't think you'll have any problems. As I say, if you can get it to run, then great. Market trend on this plant, I would say, is stable. And I think that it could it could potentially go up. I don't think it's going to come down. I think it can either stay stable or it can increase. And that is because I feel like certainly at the minute, there's an increased trend for Monstera that essentially aren't Deliciosa or Adansonii. I know this looks like Adansonii, but you, you get my point. I think there is a trend increasing for plants of that type coming on the market. 
Similarly, I don't really see anybody selling these. So in terms of availability, I would honestly say it's quite low. I couldn't find many people that were really selling these. They might be hard to get, but also it could be because the plant is not mainstream yet. As I say, it might never get mainstream. People might not want to pay much more for this than maybe a really big ad in Sony Eye, but it could also become, it could really go either way, but it's totally stable at the moment. So do I personally think it's a good investment plant? And the answer is absolutely yes. I think it's still very rare. I think not a lot of people have them. And I honestly feel personally that if we saw a lot more mature specimens, e.g. on Instagram, like social media, if we saw more of those, if we were exposed to more of those, I think people would absolutely start buying this plant because this isn't even the start of how big these plants can get. This is obviously the size of my head. It's very close to the size of my head. Um, this plant can get absolutely huge. This is no Adansonii. So I feel like the more we are exposed to this plant um, of size, then it absolutely would be a good investment because I think people would really want them. And as I say, get them running, you're good to go. As long as you can root those runners, then you're good to go. This one's quite pretty, isn't it? So I'm testing out some new feed actually on these and it, this, is, this is nice, this is really nice. So the next one I'd like to talk to you about is this guy. This is Anthurium crystallinum. Now then, these plants, haven't fluctuated too much in price. You can get these plants anywhere between high double digits to low treble digits. So you can get it from like 80 to maybe 130, depending on the plant. It really does depend, but they are quite available. I will say that much. Ease of success of propagation. I would say that they are quite easy as they can be grown from just a chunk of stem. You will see that a lot on Facebook probably. People will either be talking about how to root their chunks, they're growing something for a chunk, or people are buying chunks to grow plants from. And that is sometimes how anthuriums are sold on Facebook. They're done in chunks. So they're very good in that sense. If you have a bit of stem, you can probably get a plant out of it very easy. Time between propagations though, this is where it falls down. Because the time in between propagations, quite honestly, can be about six months. And that is because if you have an anthurium, you may know what I mean, but a lot of anthurium, the internodal spacing, so the space between the nodes on the stem of the plant is very, very tightly packed. It is jam packed together. And usually to get a bit of chunk, unless you're going to find a way to cut this plant here, which as you can probably tell, would be in insanely difficult. Um, I could probably try and cut it here, but I, I wouldn't really like to risk it in its current state, to be honest. In order to be able to propagate these, you do need quite a bit of stem. Now you can probably do it from about an inch. I mean, technically you could do it from a centimeter, but what you want is success from propagation. So at least an inch chunk, you're gonna need a while to get that in order to propagate, assuming you're not doing it from leaves. So in that sense, they're not the best in terms of time between your propagations at all. It's not gonna be a very quick return. Ease of care, no, they're not very easy. They're not very easy. They're not the hardest anthurium that I own, but they're, they're certainly not easy either, really. Kind of, maybe they're mid-run. Maybe they're on the easier end of anthuriums, but in general, anthurium are harder than Monstera, than Philodendron, than other plants. So you have to bear that in mind when propagating these. If you don't have experience with anthurium, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily go for this. I'd maybe pick a different anthurium to propagate from, for sure. Um, beautiful plants though, don't get me wrong. This one's, wow, like I'm kind of falling in love with this one on camera. This is very stunning. This is obviously new, it's not even hard, that's why it's, um, it's a bit paler. Anyway, market trend. So, I hate to say it, but the market trend for these plants, as beautiful as this little guy is, the market trend is going down. And honestly, it's because the market is, it's pretty severely flooded with crystallinum, actually. I, I don't know how and when that happened, but it's pretty flooded. You can find these probably quite easily on the internet. Now, if you want to buy it as a personal plant, they're absolutely stunning. Let me just show it to you because you really need to see how gorgeous this thing is. It's a stunning, stunning, stunning plant. Wow. But market trend is going down. Will it come back up eventually? Yeah, sure, in a couple of years. But right now, you can buy one of these. I don't think anywhere is particularly selling out of them, I wouldn't say. I personally haven't. It's just not as popular as it used to be. As a result, of course, it's very affordable and that's great. It's great if you wanna buy it for yourself. But in terms of a return on investment, not so much. They are everywhere. They're kind of everywhere a little bit. I hate saying it because I sell them, but they're kind of everywhere. So do I think it's a good investment plant? You can probably see where this is going. No, I kind of don't. As I've mentioned, they're a little bit harder to care for. They need higher humidity. If you're not good with your anthurium, you might struggle. You might not, but you might. They're a low price to buy, which is cool. 
but you can get them everywhere. The supply has more than met the demand and now the demand has dropped off. So if you want to propagate it and make more of them, you're probably not going to shift them very quickly unless you're planning on shifting them in like three years or something. Do you know what I mean? And you're going to start growing a crystalline farm. I don't think that it's a very good investment at all. Buy it for yourself because it's nice. Um, because it's a great time to buy them, to be honest. But as an investment plant, I probably wouldn't. So this beautiful thing here is a plant that not many people may have seen before. This is relatively new, I have to say. Well, it's not new, obviously the plant has existed for a while, but new in terms of people's knowledge and interest of this plant. This here is Anthurium macrolobium. Let me get this right. <laughs> I always forget this. This is a hybrid of Anthurium clarinervium and Anthurium pedatoradiatum. So basically what happens as this plant matures is you start off with leaves like this and eventually, as this one is doing, it will mature and the plant will start to grow like kind of fingers off the leaves. But it's, and let me tell you now, before I even get into price, it's very tough, okay? This personal plant here has been frozen. Fun fact, it's been frozen. It's been left outside and it's frozen and it's still fine. I've got so many good things to say about this plant, but let's start with the price. The price of this plant is up there. It's basically the same as a Florida Beauty at present. So this is around about, it's mid travels. It's around about $500, pounds, whatever have you. It might be more in the US, it might be less, I don't know. And that is for a real one. Because I must say, there are fakes sold a lot on the internet. I can see that. Not only that, but even the plants that are not fakes, not all of them display the right characteristics because I'm not sure if this is an F1 hybrid or not, but basically on like a first generation of hybrids, that's when you get the most like variability out of them. So not every hybrid looks the same, if that makes any sense. So a lot of them can vary. So choose your specimen wisely if you want to. Um, this one is absolutely legitimate. I'm pleased to be able to tell you this. This specimen here has come from a botanic garden in Glasgow. It is the real boy. This one is very, very nice. In terms of, because this is what you want to know, right? Ease of propagation. Oh my goodness. No failures at all. Literally no failures. Not only that, but this is an anthurium that likes to pop a lot. This is basically where the plant will produce little babies of itself around its base. So not only can you cut, obviously here where this anthurium is, these roots, you can also potentially get pups from this plant. Most of the propagation that I've done on this plant, a lot of it has come from pups as well. I have quite a few of these. I think I sold one recently, but I also have a few in pots and they're just sprouting all the time. I would say it's three months in between your cuttings, but when you add to the fact that it does pop when it's very happy, it's a great bonus. So this one is very, very good for propagation as well. It's easier care because one, it's very hardy. As I mentioned before, it tolerated frost. Not only that, but it's glossy. It's not a velvet anthurium. And honestly, nine times out of 10, glossy anthuriums are so much hardier than the velvet types. So if you are a bit worried about, you know, struggling with an anthurium, you just won't with this one. This is fantastic. Not only that, by the way, they're incredibly quick. These things grow fast. They size up quite quickly. I mean, this one hasn't, but it's, it's had a tough time. I've mentioned this on previous videos. This plant specifically has had a very tough time, but they grow very fast. You will not have a problem if you grow these. Market trend on these is absolutely going up and it is going up very quickly. And this is probably because it's new. I want to say it's new. Basically, it's very rare. The availability of these plants is very, very low. In fact, proper ones, they are rarely listed for sale, which means usually in terms of the internet and social media, the rarer something is, the more people tend to want it generally. Looks don't even come into it half the time, I find. So this plan is only going to go up because it's not available. It does grow very quickly. You know, it's a hardy plant. It will last in people's houses. So that's a great thing to tick off, a great box to tick if you want to spend the money. But as an investment plant, this is possibly, possibly, I don't want to say it on this channel, but I'm going to say it anyway. This could be a nit plant. It could be a nit plant. I really do think it might be. So in terms of do I think you should invest in it, if you are given the opportunity to maybe get one of these, I absolutely would invest in it. I think this could be a fantastic little earner. So that is it for part one of this video. I knew it would be probably quite long. I did want to kind of get into the meat of it and discuss, you know, different plants and just, just have a frank discussion about whether people are buying them or not, whether it's worth it. So if you want to stick around for part two, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. And part two should be coming very, very soon in which I will discuss some more plants. If you have any requests for plants that you definitely want mentioned in that second video, please 
feel free to leave them down below because I do have a list prepared, but honestly, I could maybe add a couple more entries, I think. So if you have anything that you absolutely want to know my opinion on, then I would love it if you could leave a comment and I will absolutely look at it and consider it for the next video where I do the part two. Again, after that part two, I'm actually going to do a video about essentially what we would call the big guns, the really expensive plants that are in low four digits, whether it's a good idea to buy those to invest in or not. I will get into the meat of that in a future video, and that's probably going to be very interesting. I'm kind of excited for that one. But for now, thank you very much for watching this video. It was an absolute pleasure. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you at least found this discussion interesting. Again, plants aren't just to be sold on. I know that. Plants are, of course, to enjoy, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with buying a plant simply for yourself. Similarly, there is nothing wrong with buying a plant to invest and make money from. Thank you very much for your time, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys!